just when we thought the Summer Game Fest Summer E3 season extravaganza was over, we got rumors a few days before the event that a Nintendo Direct was happening. And we heard some rumors about maybe a new 2D Mario and a new uh, Super Nintendo RPG classic coming back. But I was not expecting to get what we got today. For some reason, I felt like this Nintendo Direct was going to be a one of like those like partner showcases where we were going to get like some things like, you know, we knew we were going to see Pikmin 4 that was in the announcement. But I also just assume like, okay, yeah, we'll get, uh, you know, we got the Splatoon 3 next Splatfest. We'll get something else maybe coming out. But there were just kind of just like discussions that is Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin 4, like, is that just going to carry Nintendo for the rest of the fall? Because are we also going to try and get a, a new Switch coming up soon? So there were just a lot of questions uh, about that. So just to kind of start from the top, started pretty slow i would say the first probably five six seven maybe seven announcements were very not was like okay what what are we doing here like we're not that we're not getting that much here we're hearing about things we've heard about before and just seeing a little bit of new info on some other things so we'll start off with that first off we did get pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet has new dlc coming i knew we knew it had dlc but I think we I think we knew the name, the hidden treasure of Area Zero, but we now we get the information that part one, the Teal Mask coming this fall, uh, takes place in a mask festival, and part two, the Indigo Disc, which I think that looked kind of cool. I mean, the uh, I don't know the state of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet now with just the technical hiccups and graphical quality, but I thought the one like it's like an academy out in the middle of the ocean on the Indigo Disc. I think that seemed like a pretty cool like idea, just kind of good vibe kind of showing. But yeah, not too much else. There's a special event in the game going on now. They showed probably a bunch of Pokemon and some legendary Pokemon that I don't really know anything about. They, they could have been unannounced Pokemon. They could have been brand new Pokemon. I'm not really sure. But yeah, just kind of mentioned, I think uh, good vibes uh, through that uh, trailer. I just felt like it was uh, kind of like a cozy little time and that's not the uh, last time we'll hear about pokemon we'll hear about the a uh, few more announcements next up we got sonic superstars we got really nothing new i would say the only thing new we got was some new footage of it we knew about it, it was announced at summer game fest still fall 2023 they announced that there's 12 new zones i don't know if we knew how many zones there were going to be so there's 12 which is good uh, we did also have, uh, just this past week as well, we had a Sonic Central, and they talked about a few extra things with Sonic Superstars. But still no release date, so very interesting, but still coming out in the fall. Maybe we did get a release date. Did we get a release date? Is it October, maybe? I can't remember now. Now, all of a sudden, I'm thinking it's October, because I think it's coming out next to some other games like Spider-Man, and another game we'll get to here uh, later. But yeah, I didn't write down release date for that, but it's coming this fall. Next up, I said it's the, I wrote on my notes here, it's probably the most forgettable game of the Direct, uh, unfortunately, but this is Palea, which is a free-to-play, multiplayer, cozy sim that takes place in a breathtaking world. Those are not my words, it's like just from the, I think I took it from the Nintendo eShop page store description or whatever. That's coming this holiday. This game did nothing for me. Again, it just seemed like a lot of other free to play open world multiplayer sorts of things i'm sure it'll be get monetized to death with farming and it'll be like okay you'll i don't know man like you're like oh i want more dirt and you're like oh well you can do this for more dirt to plant or you can pay like five dollars or something i'm not really sure next up we did have persona 5 tactica which is another game we knew about we got that announced at the Xbox Showcase. That's still coming November 17th. Nothing really new. I don't think they even showed any new footage. The only thing they really announced was just that pre-orders for the physical copy are available today. Myth Force, a game from Aspire. We knew Aspire from doing all those Star Wars re-releases, and they were apparently working on Knights of the Old Republic, and that hasn't gone too well uh now but i think aspire may be only publishing this because i saw another developer i didn't write down who it was 
But I thought there was another developer tied to this, so that other developer may be the main one. Aspire might be just publishing it. But according to the direct, it's a game inspired by Saturday morning cartoons. It has a little bit of like a, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but it does kind of seem like a cell shaded art style. It's very colorful. It's first person, which I'm usually gravitating towards like first person games. Like if it was third person, I'd be like, eh, I don't know. But first person seemed kind of cool. Seemed like maybe like a dungeon crawler kind of game in the first person perspective. Uh, I saw this and I thought it seemed like a really good podcast game for sure. That's that's definitely how I would play this if, if I do get around to playing it. Does have drop in, drop out online co op out in 2023. And this is where I was like, after probably the next one, I was like, okay, you know, I kind of mentioned it before. I was like, this direct's like really starting slow. I'm really kind of getting concerned about what they're even going to show in this thing. We knew Splatoon 3 is getting some DLC, but uh, all they did to show here was that the next Splatfest is going to be ice cream uh, flavored, I guess we'll just say. So they kind of did it with Splatoon. So usually in Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, they had the Splatfest where you like choose between two things. Now with Splatoon 3, you like choose between three and you're on like three different teams. So it's vanilla, strawberry, or mint chip is the uh <laughs> the splat fest i don't know who i would i would probably oh man i probably have to go strawberry i'm not a big mint chip like mint ice cream i like mints but i'm not a big like mint ice cream person uh you can let me know what you choose down in the comments below that's coming july 14th through 16th also has new challenges they didn't really say too much about that i didn't i haven't played splatoon 3 i do have splatoon 2 that i bought pretty cheap probably about a year and a half ago or so but i still haven't gotten around to playing it but, so I'm not really sure what challenges are even in the game or if there are some, but uh, they did show one there. Next, we got another Pokemon game, as promised earlier after uh, Scarlet and Violet. We got Detective Pikachu Returns, finally. So this game came out a long time ago on the 3DS. It was just Detective Pikachu, and that was like apparently part one of the story and now i might be wrong but i'm assuming just pokemon uh, detective pikachu returns is that second part and i guess that first part's not coming to switch also so of course you know they had the big motion picture with ryan reynolds and i saw it i thought it was pretty cool uh, i thought it was a good good fun movie it's been forever since i've seen a pokemon movie so it, it was fun i think this actually does look pretty cool I think uh, some people were talking online about the visual quality of Pokemon games nowadays. I don't really care too much about that. I was really just into the voice acting. I love the gruff Pikachu voice, like drinking coffee and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. So that is coming out October 6th, 2023. I don't know if I will probably ever play this because there's so many other things. But it's something I think would be really cool to play. I mean, even getting back, I wanted to get back into Pokemon several years ago when they had the, um, let's go Pokemon. What was that called? Let's go. I think, or Hey, no, yeah, it's not. Hey, you, that was the N64 game. Something like let's go Pokemon, Pikachu Pokemon. And they had, uh, <laughs> had Pikachu and Eevee on the front. There were two different versions you could get. I can't remember what the name of that is, but it was kind of like a remake, just like more of a slimmed down version of the original Pokemon games on Game Boy. I felt like that would have been my my in to this series again, but I never did get around to playing it. Next up, we had our uh, Takahashi and the other guy. I can't remember his name. I can see his face. He was the producer, director, or whatever on Super Mario Odyssey. Can't remember his name. Apologies to that individual. But they came on to basically announce three new things here. And the first one was... I guess I'll just get right into it. Super Mario RPG. And so we knew that there was a rumor that a Super Nintendo like RPG was coming back. The other than Super Mario RPG, the other two people were theorizing was Earthbound and Chrono Trigger. And I I absolutely would choose Super Mario RPG. I haven't played Earthbound. I'd love to play it at some point. Maybe I can get around to it on Nintendo Switch Online at some point. But I used to play Super Mario RPG back on the original Super Nintendo. It's one of those games when I was too young and I got rid of the game, but I don't really remember what happened to it. It just left my possession one day. Like, I may have sold it. I may have just lost it. I don't really know. Maybe we gave it to a friend. They never gave it back. I don't remember the, the story. But I do remember going into a local store and buying it. 
um, a long time ago. But yeah, I played the uh, original for a good amount. I never did beat it. I got to like the Yoshi farm area, rode the mine carts. Um, of course, like that has that really, I feel like memorable intro where you go and fight Bowser, but then it's the legend of the seven stars or whatever. It's that kind of like knife sword looking character. Saw him a little bit in the, in the trailer. He takes over. So Bowser, I believe from what I remember, like he's like a party member in this game. So I'm really interested in that. So even when this game came out, it was a like, I think it was just a Squaresoft game also with Nintendo. So apparently it wasn't Square Enix back then, but it was a Squaresoft thing. I don't know if Square Enix is involved in this any at all, but I mean, we saw lots of footage and I think this is absolutely a day one for me. I've been currently playing on uh, my 2DS. I'm playing Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. It was the 3DS version of that. And because I've just really been wanting to play a Mario RPG I got into, I've played Thousand Year Door on GameCube, Paper Mario. I beat that. And then I never did beat the original Paper Mario. And then, of course, I think I had that on Wii Virtual Console still. And then I went and played that a few years ago. And, of course, I put like 10, 15 hours into it, but I never beat it. And probably if I started it again, I'd probably start completely over again. But we did get a release date for this as well, November 17th, 2023. Pre-order today. I'm very excited. We saw a little bit of the box art, and it just kind of was reminiscent of the Super Famicom box art of this game, but it doesn't really seem like it's just like the character standing there with like a white background. We had that. I don't remember the white puffy character's name, but of course we got Gino. Gino was in the trailer. That was really cool. Maybe he'll come back in another game at some point now with this with this revival, and maybe this even opens up the door for another. Super Mario RPG sequel or or whatnot. It was kind of difficult with Alpha Dream, because speaking of Mario Luigi Superstar Saga on 3DS, that was like their last game, really, before Alpha, Alpha Dream went bankrupt and never even got a Mario and Luigi game on Switch. And then, of course, with Paper Mario doing its own thing and not being an RPG series anymore, really, we didn't really have a Mario RPG at that point. So this is really cool to, to see that back and... Again, just that claymation style, just looking at, like the characters, like they just they almost look like they're so young. Like Mario looks like a child in there. It just feels like it's uh it gave me that same kind of like twist that Nintendo does on art style, like when they did with the Link's Awakening remake on Switch. It just feels like that like this is the same that we remember it, but it's like it's modern now, it's it's new, it's it's really cool, so but yeah, we didn't, that's not all we got uh, from those, uh, Koizumi, there, I remembered it, three minutes later, yeah, he's the other guy that was talking about all this stuff, so new, a new prince, we didn't get a title, but a new Princess Peach game was teased right after, because they were like, oh, the, you know, uh, Mario's not the only one getting a new game, and uh, they are talking, but they just saw, saw a little footage, has more of a, like a play kind of thing, like you'd see in a Paper Mario, so it has like curtains and audience members and whatnot uh princess peach is running around stepping on a stage her dress seems to change color uh that's coming out next year which i think is really cool the peach is getting another game i think was it like really only super princess peach was like the only game that princess peach really started in, and that was on ds like probably like 2008 2007 probably something like that so it's been uh, quite a while and then next up, we got Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon is getting a, quote, visually enhanced version. So they're not calling it a remake, remaster. It just seems like it might be just kind of a port, like a widescreen port. I'm not really sure. But that's also coming in 2024. I played Luigi's Mansion, the original, back on GameCube a long time ago. And never did play Dark Moon, never did play Luigi's Mansion 3. It's a series I really do want to get into, but unfortunately, I just haven't gotten into it. I really do want to play the 3DS remake of Luigi's Mansion. I feel like if I went and got into Luigi's Mansion 1 again, that would be where I'd play it. But it's just kind of interesting that they're going back to Dark Moon and not porting both games. Because then if you did, you'd have all the entire series on Switch, which is kind of uh, like, like that happens to a game later on. Like That happens to Pikmin where they... Uh, have one and two coming out which we'll talk about soon but yeah those were the three mario related announcements for now 
And uh, yeah, then we continued on with some more Nintendo Switch headlines, and we went right back down to the not exciting stuff at all. So we're getting the Batman Arkham Trilogy. I put uh, bringing the Direct back down to Earth. Has all three games, Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, and all the DLC coming fall 2023, which I saw that and I was like, oh man, are, are we getting the Armored Edition, the Wii U version of uh, Arkham City? Can't forget about that. Next up, we had Gloomhaven coming out September 18th, and you can pre-order that on the eShop today. It's a tactical card game based on the adaptation of a board game, has uh, turn-based card battles, it looked pretty unoriginal. I don't want to say that. That's, that's pretty harsh. But it just seemed like everything. Like, I almost felt like I had to zoom in like on my YouTube video to be like, what am I looking at here? I couldn't really see. I think also it didn't help that watching it in the direct, that, like, that footage they had did not look like it was running very good. It was like stuttering. There were frame drops, stuff like that. It, it's... Kind of like, at this point, you might not even be paying too much attention, but just watching that footage, was like, this is, looks kind of rough. But next up, we can't have a Nintendo event without Just Dance 2024 and Just Dance Plus. There's new songs. It's coming out October 24th. Please be excited. We got a new announcement from Xseed. We got Silent Hope coming out October 3rd. It's an action RPG with a top-down, it's kind of isometric kind of look. Uh, there's a part where they show a Chris, uh, excuse me, a princess in a crystal of her own tears. And if that doesn't sell you on the game, I don't know what will. But I saw some people talking about this online that they thought it looked pretty cool, and it's just a game that I won't play. But I mean, it seems like a pretty pretty decent adventure. I know X Seed usually puts out some good stuff from the uh, Asian market, Japanese market, let's say. Faye Farm. We've seen this a couple times. I think we saw this at Summer Game Fest, and we saw it one other time. It's another farming game. September 8th, Nintendo Switch console exclusive. You know, it's kind of the Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley kind of stuff. Has a local and online co-op. Hot Wheels Unleashed 2's Turbo Charge coming out October 29th. And they just showed some trailer footage of that. Manic Mechanics, which seems like a very overcooked slash moving out style game where you're it's a co-op and you're running around trying to fix cars but yeah you're you're repairing vehicles in this instead of serving food or moving stuff out of a house i think it looks fun it looks hectic that was from man who was that i can't remember the developer i didn't write that down um but this is first two consoles coming out july 13th uh, so first consoles on nintendo switch mario and Ra excuse me mario and rabbits sparks of hope their new dlc the last spark hunter is actually out today, so that was a shadow drop. I don't know if that was really a shadow drop or we knew it was coming out today. Uh, that has a demo. Uh, excuse me, the main game also has a demo coming out now. I don't. I still bought Kingdom Battle with the Donkey Kong DLC when it was really cheap digitally a few years ago. I still just haven't played it. It's just another game on the backlog to do. I'd love to play Sparks of Hope. I think it's really cool that the third and final DLC is the Rayman uh expansion basically that rayman's gonna be in there i don't think we're ever gonna get a third mario and rabbits because apparently this game did not sell very well so but hopefully that's just we can get some more mario not mario but nintendo and ubisoft collaborations in the future like we had Star Fox and starlink had mario and rabbits hopefully we can uh hopefully we'll see something maybe for the next generation uh switch or next generation nintendo console well, we know when that theme kicks up, it's time for another Dragon Quest, because it doesn't matter what spin-off game Dragon Quest we get, we're getting that Dragon Quest theme. So this is Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince coming December 1st. Seemed to be maybe like a Pokemon spin on Dragon Quest. Talked about like capturing and training different monsters and having them battle. I think that's coming out. Yeah, I already said that December 1st. Just another game for this year. It might be on other platforms that I didn't look up. And we've had like Dragon Quest Treasures and Builders and Heroes and all this other stuff. All these different spin-off Dragon Quest games. So, yeah, we still haven't gotten our Dragon Quest, was that 2 or 3 HD 2D remake? We're still waiting on that. And uh, then, of course, Dragon Quest, is it 12 at this point? That uh, is having that kind of like darker style. Maybe we'll see more of that within the next calendar month or calendar month, but calendar year. 
Moving on, we got the game we knew we were going to get in this direct. We got Pikmin 4. We got new footage. Showed about, I don't know, maybe seven, eight minutes of new stuff. Showed a Game Boy Advance SP that they're picking up. Wonder what other Nintendo fun things as uh, your Pikmin can pick up and bring back to your ship. One thing they advertised was the Dandori Battles. I thought this looked multiplayer, but maybe it isn't. I was looking for the moment where they were saying Dandori Battle... And then I was waiting for that little wordage on the very bottom that says, like, oh, Nintendo Switch Online account, you know, is needed for online play. But I didn't see that, so I didn't see too much else. It seems like really just a, they throw you in an area and you just collect more objects than your other person. And you win. Like, that seems like what it really is. And you, you're kind of, like, rescuing these downed travelers and whatnot. And if you win, you can revive them and have them help you at your base camp showed some new underground areas it looks pretty scary to me i don't know i just i don't like these dark areas i remember when i was a kid it's probably just from traumatic looking at pikmin one when i was a kid and like they have a like the night time you're like running around it's like so dark and oh man it was it was scary back then so i'm still i'm still freaked out by that but to help you at night we have new glow pikmin they help on with night expeditions. Not too much else with it other than um, July 21st. We knew about that. And there's a demo announced for June 28th. So very soon from probably when you're hearing this, you can go check out the Pikmin 4 demo. But that's not all. We also got Pikmin 1 and 2 HD on the eShop. Shadow Drop today. And I want to say the physical version of Pikmin 1 and 2, that comes out and maybe September, I want to say, which that was pretty surprising because I thought like, okay, maybe you can get this physical version of Pikmin 1 and 2 out uh, before Pikmin 4 comes out. So then you can play 1, 2, and 3 before 4 comes out. But no, Pikmin 1 and 2 HD, specifically the physical version will be out uh, in a few months after Pikmin 4 has been out. But yeah, if you want to play Pikmin 1 and 2 HD, you can download that today. I think there's a, I think you can buy them separately, I think. And if not, you can also uh, buy the bundle whatnot. So if I was going to get back into Pikmin, this would definitely be the the avenue to do so. Because I've always wanted to play Pikmin 3 Deluxe. I just, again, just haven't gotten around to it. Another game we've known about. This is announced at the PlayStation Showcase, along with Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater Delta. We got the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1. We got a few extra details here, too. So it's the first three games. It has Metal Gear 1 and 2. And even has the NES versions of Metal Gear and Snake's Revenge. Which the kind of original NES version of Metal Gear is whatever. Like, I guess it's still canon, maybe. But Snake's Revenge was a kind of like not canon at all. So we never got Metal Gear 2, like the actual Metal Gear 2 until it came to subsistence on the ps2 version on ps2 so it's kind of cool that like even though they th they threw snake's revenge in here like a game that isn't even canon like at all i think that was really cool if i'm being a little greedy i kind of wanted ghost babble on here as well which was the game boy game but in addition we got the Metal Gear Solid graphic novel for Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 which i think is awesome those were on like PSP, I think. So those were like very obscure. And I think they kind of go for a pricey penny if you're able to find them. Has screenplay books with lots of info, digital soundtrack. And we did finally get a release date as well. That is coming October 24th. So October just getting loaded up. Pre-order today. It's 50 bucks, I do believe. And so it is on Switch because obviously here. But one thing for some reason I guess I didn't realize is that it's only coming to Xbox Series consoles and PS5. So no PS4, Xbox One versions um, at all. They also mentioned you can buy the games available separately. But it sounds like if you buy the games separately, you're not getting the graphic novel, the screenplay, the info, all that stuff. But I'm very excited. Definitely going to pick up the, the PS5 version and uh, play that. Very interested to see how Metal Gear Solid, I mean, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 1 holds up. I don't think it's going to hold up very well. I think that's going to be a real struggle to play through because they don't have like the first person aiming and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll see how that goes. And I, I'm a huge Metal Gear fan, but I never really have played Metal Gear Solid 1 very much. It's uh, mostly because I played the Twin Snakes version on GameCube. That's where I that's where I played, uh, played it a lot. So we'll be go back to the poly polygonal 
Metal Gear Solid, the first one. We'll see how that goes. Game that's been on Xbox and some other platforms for a while. We got Vampire Survivors. I've never played it. It's kind of like, I don't want to call it an, like an auto battler, which I think it might be. It's kind of addicting, though. Apparently people love it. It's coming August 17th, and it has four-player local co-op. Kind of run through a few more of these here. Headbangers Rhythm Royale's minigame collection. Uh, you're playing as birds, doing musical things. There's 23 minigames, and you can play up to 30 players. Also coming to PlayStation and I believe Xbox as well. That comes out October 31st, right in time for Halloween. So when you're sitting there eating all your candy on Halloween, you can fire up Headbangers Rhythm Royale and play that with all your friends. Next up, we had Penny's Big Breakaway, which is kind of a new 3D platformer coming out early 2024. They said it's from the developers of uh, Sonic Mania, so I'm not, I didn't look too much into it, but I don't know if this is a Christian Whitehead. I don't know if this is headcanon. Uh, I don't know specifically who's involved, but some makers of Sonic Mania are behind this. I People use this as a negative term, but I hope it's a collect-a-thon. I love those types of games. There's a lot of other 3D platforms I want to play. I mean, I've played Ukulele. I thought it was fine. But like Hat in Time, I wanted to play that at some point. Uh, so this just seems like another, another game kind of to get my fix. I was also hoping for a Banjo-Kazooie announcement at Xbox, but did not happen. So I'm going to have to get my fix somewhere else mario kart 8 deluxe booster course pass wave 5 that is a mouthful still no date but just saying summer 2023 i'm sure just some random july i would expect next month we'll get a release date for that probably i would say maybe late july that'll come out we got a new track it's squeaky clean sprint didn't get to see what other tracks were going to be in there so probably everything from previous mario kart games to some stuff that's in mario kart tour we also got three new characters. We knew some new characters were coming. Now we finally get them. We got three of them. We got Petey, Wiggler, and Kamek. So Wiggler, I think they said it was from Mario Kart 7. Petey was from Double Dash. And Kamek, they, I guess, just plucked from Mario Kart Tour. Every once in a while, I try to go play Mario Kart Tour on my phone. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, this is, this is pretty boring. Only not too many announcements left. We got Star Ocean, the second story R which is a remake of the second Star Ocean game. I think they did the remake of like one of the original Star Ocean games not too long ago. But this one is more of like an HD 2D style where they do all their fun triangle strategy, Octopath Travelers and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I kind of mentioned it earlier. I was still waiting on that Dragon Quest HD 2D uh, remake one. Has real-time battles, but I think this is the first time they're doing that in the HD 2D style because usually it's a more of a... Um, turn-based but now it's action real-time battles i think it looks great it looks stylish i've never played star ocean but it seems like especially with square enix rpgs like you do have the final fantasies you do have the dragon quest but then star ocean is kind of like that third tier i think star ocean has like some of like the best art honestly which is probably terrible to say to dragon quest fans because of akira toriyama and the dragon ball art style and all that stuff but I, I think the Star Ocean games look really cool. I don't think they ever re re review all that well. But we'll see how this one does. Comes out November 2nd. Just another game for this year. And it's coming to other platforms as well. I think just maybe PlayStation Steam with Xbox's track record with Square Enix recently. I don't think that's coming there. Another uh, WarioWare game got announced. I wasn't expecting that. We had Get It Together not too long ago. Maybe it was at 2021. But it's another game, but this is a more kind of gyro-specific WarioWare game. So, kind of WarioWare, get it together, had a, like was kind of more co-op focused. This seems to be more kind of like, what was that one that was on Wii? I can't remember. People keep mentioning that one. But never did play that one. I played a lot of WarioWare Touched on DS. I love that one. I think that's a great game. I think that may be, it's hard to say that's my favorite WarioWare when it's like the only one I've played. But it seems like... People really are. People really talk highly of that one for people who've played the other series. Just looking around it, looking about it, it's like it might be a good workout game. I'm not really sure because uh, you're moving a lot. It's coming November third, so one day after Star Ocean: The Second Story R has 200 mini games. I didn't play. Yeah, I didn't play the last one. Uh, get it together. I think maybe I played the demo for it that was on the eShop, but you can pre-order that today. And last up, we had three more short announcements. We got uh, just some more info on Nintendo Live 2023. That's tied to PAX West, which is an in-person event. 
That's going to be over, was that Labor Day weekend, September 1st through 4th. I think it'd be awesome to go, but apparently it's like a raffle to go. So it's kind of surprising at, at that. So I was like, you got to sign up on the website and maybe you'll get a ticket. I think there's a little bit different way to get in if you're already um, confirmed to go to PAX West. But uh, I, I thought about just inputting my name, but I don't feel like I'd have the ability to go even if I want a ticket. So I'm just not going to bother. A couple of things left. The penultimate announcement, we got Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and we knew we had the Link Amiibo. We had Now we are getting the Zelda and Ganondorf Amiibo coming this holiday. I was kind of surprised that that was it from Tears of the Kingdom. I thought this might have been a good time to maybe announce DLC. Like we got the, what was that, Champions something, whatever that was, on Breath of the Wild. So I thought maybe we were going to get an announcement for DLC, but we did not. Next up, we got our final announcement, which... Other than Super Mario RPG, I think this is definitely the game of the show, for me at least. But, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure everyone's talking about this game. But it is Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Uh, this is absolutely the game everybody's talking about. The first thing is that it kind of zooms out. You see this talking flower. You're like voice acting in a Mario game that isn't a Wahoo um this is just that little flower going onward and upward or something like that so it's a much more colorful style than the new super mario brothers games just with the animations the way it's looking the color just the detail from like stepping on blocks and whatnot in the backgrounds it, it just seems so much more than what the new super mario brothers games are and to be quite honest i don't like the new super mario brothers games you give me something like Donkey Kong Country every day of the week instead of these new Super Mario Bros. games. I think they look bland. I think they're... I don't think Mario controls all that well on these in these games. Uh, I would still say probably like Super Mario World and Mario 3, of course, are the, are the pinnacle of 2D Mario. I've only played... So I've played three of the new Super Mario Bros. games. Played the original on DS. Did not play the one on 3DS. I played the one on Wii, and I've played a little bit of the one on um, Wii U, uh, which then was ported to, to Switch, uh, Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. But I, I'm very happy with this. I've probably watched this trailer probably close to 10 times at this point. I love with Nintendo, when they show a game and it's coming out soon, they show a lot of it. It's just like Mario RPG and just now like with Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It's, it's a good amount of footage. It's a good, like, almost three-minute trailer. So we just see Mario running around. He's jumping, bouncing on Goombas that are sleeping and stuff like that. But then we get to the world kind of transformations and wacky stuff starts going on. Like, Mario, like, all these pipes start going all crazy. Mario gets tall. Mario turns into a ball and starts bowling through these kinds of things. You're collecting wonder seeds. It seemed like at one point there's a world map running around like Super Mario 3D World. Daisy's playable. You're like pushing a pipe against a hammer bro or something like that. There's even these purple coins. I don't know if you get those to unlock certain things. Oh, and I guess Mario turns into an elephant. Uh, it's just absolutely wild uh, in this. And I know people on YouTube have put up uh, kind of not only just reactions, but kind of more in-depth analysis videos of everything going on like there's a part where they're like gliding through the air where they're like holding big hats and stuff like that so obviously we got the elephant that was the big thing and so when we're seeing an elephant there's got to be more right i don't know if there's more animals but there's got to be more just kind of wacky power-ups in this game so i'm pretty happy I, even just me right now just talking about it, like i'm smiling it's coming out october 20th 2023 I did not think a new 2D Mario would get me excited, but this this game absolutely did that. It's just, uh, I just wonder how, geez, pun intended. I just wonder how they even settled on that name, Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Like, I think that's a that's a great name. Very happy with it. But other than that, that was that was really the Nintendo Direct. Uh, a little bit shorter podcast, little post game here than an xbox one because xbox was probably about an hour and a half this is only about 40 minutes but just very happy with this nintendo direct multiple things here for me to pick up especially the top two absolutely being super mario brothers wonder and super mario rpg i 
if I ever get back into that series, I would love to play Pikmin. Love to pick up Pikmin 4. It's probably going to be some years. And, of course, it's we, I mean, we've seen the footage of it, but, I mean, we got Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. Finally got a date for that. Very happy with that. There's already rumors on the Master Collection that Metal Gear Solid 4 and Peace Walker are going to be in the uh, next Volume 2, which is amazing for Metal Gear Solid 4 because that game has been still landlocked on PS3 all these years. would be great to finally get that on another platform. But, yeah, just, I don't want to call it, like, the best Nintendo Direct, but I think it was amazing because we weren't expecting this. We weren't expecting a new WarioWare, a new Mario RPG, a new 2D Mario. You know, we weren't, like, I'm just trying to look at some of the other stuff on the list. A new Princess Peach, a new, like, Luigi's Mansion port, Detective Pikachu finally coming back. We weren't expecting this much stuff in this Nintendo Direct. So, I would expect, let's say, maybe October, November, I would suggest maybe getting the next Nintendo Direct. So, it's going to be a while. It's it's always the worst feeling when like these announcements come you're like well gotta wait another year pretty much for some of these extra things so but yeah i want to say like, maybe like annapurna's has something maybe they've already had it i don't know but yeah pretty much the summer showcases are pretty much done always rumors that we're gonna get another playstation showcase hopefully get one of those i wouldn't be surprised maybe next month month after we get an uh, indie world direct we we'll see some new indie games coming to nintendo switch but yeah, please let me know what your comments down below is of this Nintendo Direct. I was very, very pleased with it. I thought it was fantastic. And just when I thought I was done with the games that were going to come out this year that I was going to pick up, like making my list of Spider-Man 2 and, and Sonic Superstars and whatnot, this Nintendo Direct's like, nah, you've, you've got some more things you need to play. So yeah, thanks so very much for listening. Thanks for watching. I always just try to intend these kind of videos. I, I maybe want to try and put my face on camera at some point. I just kind of have to figure that out. I have a webcam, but it's like probably like some piddly 720p HP webcam I'm looking at right now. I'd love to put my face on camera at some point, but i um, just kind of have to figure that out. But I, I kind of just intend some of these just to be put on in the background, like a podcast. Maybe you're just driving around you put on like the youtube video on your you know you're not watching it but you just put it on in the background maybe you're doing dishes or doing, doing oh just dropping stuff now just doing some other stuff and uh just hanging out and listening so with that i hope we'll be back doing some other video maybe related things probably not doing any more card videos uh, unfortunately for the near time but uh yeah please like and subscribe if you care and uh we'll see you next time bye